Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fifth presentation in the University of Guam Presidential Lecture Series. We're very happy that you made time to be with us tonight to listen to the speaker. Um, I would like to start by introducing a few of the dignitaries that are with us tonight. And first of all, uh, of course, our president, Dr. Robert Underwood. Dr. Helen Whippy, Senior Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. <laughs> Dr. John Peterson, Acting Assistant Vice President of Graduate Studies Research and Scientific Programs. And our representative from the Board of Regents of Vice Chairman, Dr. Walter Chris Harris. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize um, Carlos Pandolina, who's here representing Vice Speaker Benjamin Cruz. <laughs> the Honorable Catherine A. Merriman, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of Guam. <laughs> and our other Dr. Underwood, Dr. Nerissa Britannia Underwood, the Superintendent of Guam Department of Education. And our sister institution, uh, from our sister institution, Dr. Mary Okada, from the Guam Community College President. <laughs> and last but not least, I'd also like to recognize the presence of Mr. Rick Rains, the Environmental Program Manager for Joint Region Marianas. Thank you for joining us. And now to introduce our guest speaker, I'd like to turn the mic over to the 10th president of the University of Guam, Dr. Underwood. Uh, thank you very much, Louise. And uh, for the Ramon, uh, the citation of the Ramon McSaisai Award for his uh, path-breaking and passionate crusade to engage Filipinos in acts of enlightened citizenship that maximize the power of the law to protect and nurture the environment for themselves, their children, and generations yet unborn. We're very fortunate this evening to have with us attorney uh, Antonio Oposa, who is one of Asia's leading voices in the global area of uh, global arena of environmental law. His uh, work is intention internationally known for bringing to the highest court of law the basic truth that humanity has the responsibility to future generations to ensure the availability of the sources of, of life, of land, air, and water. This is known as the principle of intergenerational responsibility. Uh, when uh, Mr. Oposa was first announced as uh, coming to uh, this fifth uh, presidential lecture, someone asked me, what can someone from the Philippines tell us about the environment? And I was, uh, I was kind of taken aback by this because the, the, I guess the notion of it is, uh, is, is somewhat novel to people. But yet here we have uh, Mr. Oposa who has uh, courageously uh, taken on uh, a number of challenges. And as you'll see this evening, his passion and his commitment uh, is uh, not only uh, recognized throughout the, the Philippines, but uh, around the world. He received his law degree from the University of the Philippines and earned his Master's of Law uh, from the Harvard Law School, where he was uh, selected by his fellow students to be the commencement speaker of his graduating uh, class. He teaches environmental law at the University of the Philippines and is a visiting lecturer of universities around the world. And for his work, he has received the Outstanding Young Man of the Philippines and the highest UN award in the field of the environment, the United uh, UNEP Global Role of Honor. He's the first Asian to receive the International Environmental Law Award from the Washington, D.C. Uh, Center for I Environmental Law. And of course, uh, he most recently received the Ramon Magsaysay Award. Uh, but even for this committed lawyer, there is a time for work, uh, work and a time for play. When he's not battling environmental foes, Oposa scuba dives, rides horses, plays tennis, sails rights, and gardens. What a character. What a character, as we're going, as we're going to see. Uh, you know, the, uh, the relation, the, he's going to talk about the, uh, uh, 
the, the science seat is, you know, and I trying to I was trying to figure out what are the connections between historically between the uh, the science and Guam, and there are many. And of course, uh, for for you history fans, you know that the very first uh, uh, when Padre San Torres first came to Guam, he had a language informant that taught him how to speak Chamorro while he was in the Philippines, and his language informant was a Visayan who had been shipwrecked in Guam. And then later on, when he actually had his uh, mission here, uh, the first person to be martyred uh, was a uh, Visayan uh, assistant uh, from the Philippines. Of course, I'm married to a Visayan, so that's the third thing I can think of. So there's a lot of connections going on between, uh, uh, between uh, Guam and the, and the Visayan. And it's uh, with a great deal of honor and pride that I present to you, uh, Attorney Sir.